What is up people, welcome to a new tutorial on my program to actually control a reactor. So I hope you guys are doing all right, but this is the program and I had to put it on open computer because in 1.10 currently there is no computer craft. So I've decided to send this program to computer craft and I must admit, I'm really happy I did. This mod is amazing. Look. Okay, maybe may, maybe uh, I, I did something wrong. But let's say your screen is a little bit smaller. It's actually gonna run even if the screen is not the same size. Uh, currently, there is the bug that uh, I don't re-show the back. So if you change the size of the screen, you do need to close and reopen it. But it's not a big problem. It's not a big problem. So what I'm going to do is going to show you how you can get this to work in your reactor with my reactor that I have over there. But first of all, let me show you what it does. So that way you can know if it's the thing you want. All right. So currently, uh, that thing doesn't seem to be on. There you go. Now it's on. So now it's on that you can see that it's generating power and I'm telling you that it can have between 60% RF storage and 70% RF storage. Let, let's boost that to 80. So there's a 20% chance and this is only working if you produce more power than actu you actually grab. In this thing here, I'm actually getting 1,280 and I can produce 6,000 RF. So what it's going to do is it's going to start producing the power until it reaches this gap and then it's going to try to stabilize to exactly what you're keeping, what you're trying to get here at the RF per tick while it's putting the control rods in so that way your fuel usage will go down. That way you save a lot of fuel and if you've done any of the extreme reactor in 1.10 you know that they use a lot of fuel. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what the program does. You can you can play with these. Uh, they do save in your server or your save if you're playing in single player. And this won't change. So if, let's say, you stop it and you restart it, the change are still going to be there. This allows you that if you ever have a problem with your server, it crashes and then the server reopens. If this thing is chunk loaded, it will also restart automatically and continue, you know, generating and fixing your reactor at the desired, you know, power. So as you can see currently, it's at 7,000, uh, 7 million, and it's at 2,075 and like I said, I'm doing 1,280. So it's pretty close to what it's supposed to be. So as you can see, as soon as this thing's gonna start going down, this thing starts going back up to generate exactly the power. Since it can't really get to 2,080, uh, 12, 1,280, it's going to vary between 1,300 and probably 1,200. But this is the program. So now let's let's show you how you can make this. Everything you're going to need is in this chest here. You're going to need a screen, the number of screen that you want, tier 3. And you're going to need computer case, tier 3, also. And a power converter. Uh, I can show you how they're made, but it's a little bit complex. You're going to have to look into the mod itself, open computer. There's a bunch of things that like you need to make first. You're also going to need a hard drive. I don't actually need, think you need the tier 3, but for this we can easily check it out. So we're going to put the computer straight on the computer port. Again, you don't need to do this, you can use a cable if you want. It works with or without the cable. And over there, I do have it without the cable, but it doesn't change anything. So let's see, we're going to put that here. So, all right, so now we've got the computer case right there. So here you can see it can take a level 2 and a level 3. Here it can take 3, 3, 2, 2. So you get what you can do with this. Alright. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to place all your cards that you get. So you need a hard drive, you need a graphic card, you need memory, 
and you need an internet card with also something that I forgot to put in the box. Uh, no, no, no. I've got everything. So you're going to place your hard drive. You're going to place your graphic card. You're going to place the internet card. It's important that you play the graphic card first because this one is a three and this one is a two. So then you place this one. And in here, you also have your CPU, which is important. All right. And then the two things that you're going to need also. You're going to need an operating system, which is OpenOS that I use. And you're going to need the Lua BIOS to be able to do any Lua thing. And this is made in Lua. So with these two things, you're going to be able to just put this one there and put the operating system right in here. The next thing you're going to want to do is simply install your screen on top of it. So again, you can put a cable, doesn't matter. It's actually what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put my screen here on the side. I'm going to go five by three just because that's on what I actually uh, base the program. If you put smaller or bigger, it's simply going to work anyway. Uh, it's just probably going to put like a larger bar on the sides, but the program itself, it's still going to be visible. Okay. So of course, if you put your screen away, you're going to need your cable like so. Now it's connected. I'm also going to place a cable right here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need a power converter. Easy to do. And we're going to place it directly on the power tap. Again, this can be placed anywhere. Uh, you just need to send power to this power converter because it is needed to actually power the computer. Uh, so what I do is I just start my reactor. It's going to power this. Now everything's powered and it kind of run in a circle. So as you can see, it's going to start generating some power. So now we have everything we need except a keyboard. That I forgot. I knew I forgot something. There's no uh, visual for it. it. Just looks like this in my pack. Uh, so you can place it anywhere on the screen, on the computer, on anything, and it's going to work. Okay. So in here, we're simply going to turn on the computer. No CPU is installed. Oh, yeah. Install your CPU first. There you go. So as you can see, it's starting the boot, but it's really slow. Because currently we're running it on the drive here. So what we're going to do, oops, uh, we need to click the keyboard. It doesn't let me. All right. So maybe you actually need to put it on the screen. There we go. So it's on the screen. There we go. Now we can. So we're going to do install. This is going to allow to install the open OS into the hard drive. So you do yes. And it's going to install everything onto your hard drive. When this is done, it's going to ask you if you want to reboot. I'm going to say also yes. When it's done, like I said, it, there's a lot of things. There you go. Installation complete. And you say yes. Now it's going to load on the hard drive. So look, done. <laughs> So the next thing you can do, you can remove the OpenOS drive and you can throw it away or you can keep it for another time. Okay. Now we're at the part where we actually need to do something. So we're going to go with paste bin, get F. You don't need this part, but I always put the dash F. It's if the file already exists, it's going to replace it. So. And then you're going to go with this code. It's in the description below, but you can't copy paste it into computer crap, uh, into open computer. So it is important that you actually uh, type it. So it's going to be S G G I zero B U U M. And then you're going to go with uh, a name of something like maybe start dot Lua. The name is important, but doesn't matter. You're going to be able to change it for whatever you want. And then you're just going to click enter. All right. So now we have the start that Lua. So you're going to need to do two dots to go back into the root of your computer. It's currently we're in home. And if we go LS, it's going to show you what we have. We have bin, boot, dev, etc., home, init, and stuff. We're going to add a file right here. 
we're going to do edit autorun.lua. And it's going to open a page like this. Then you're going to want to type os.execute parentheses. Uh, my keyboard switch language. This. And you're going to go home slash start.lua. Again, this can be changed to the name that you actually used. If you want to use something else, it's up to you. Just don't use Reactor because it's actually a program that already exists. It's the name of the program that's going to load. All right, you're going to do Control S and Control W. It's okay. So now we're going to go back in home and oh, uh, CD home. And I want to show you here we have start.lua. So we're just going to show you what's inside start.lua. Okay, what's inside start.lua? It's simply going to go grab the two program that I use to make this reactor program, which is the button API, which is available for everyone to use. If you want to code something, you need to put buttons on your screen. You can go check my button API on my paste bin and it's free for everyone. You can use it however you want. I don't mind. It's actually perfect. It's what it's there for. So it gets the two program, it gets the button API, it gets the reactor.lua, and then it removes the API from the system because if you already had one and it changed, it won't apply the change. And then it executes the reactor program. Okay, so control W, I'm going to close it. And what I'm going to show you is I'm going to close the system. So now it's closed. And when I'm going to open it, it's going to boot and start my program. See, it's downloaded. And now we have the program running. So we're going to be able to change this. To change on the screen, there is two ways. You can shift right click like so. It works. And if we go in game mode one, uh, no, zero, uh, I think you can, no, you just shift right click. <laughs> I thought you could left click. Or you can just right click the screen and you're going to have the pop up thing in here. And then you can left click to change things. Uh, what is cool with this program is it doesn't matter how many computers there are with the same program on your server it will still work. Everybody could have one. Your friends, your mother, your sister, your uncle, grandfather. I don't know why you would play Minecraft, but why not? It's a beautiful game. <laughs> but yeah, so this is the program and how to install it. Uh, just to show you that it works, I actually going to go back in this and I'm going to place again the two cables like so. This thing's going to tell you that it's going to receive 1,280. And this thing's going to start to lose a little bit of power, but it's going to take forever because there is a lot of power in there. <laughs> so, yeah. But as you can see, it's starting to go down and it's not actually producing RF because we're higher than the limit. So the program actually works. And if you really want to check it out, in here the control roads are at the max. So, yeah, guys, if you want to take a look at the program itself, uh, the link is going to be in the description below. But like I said, you want to grab in the description below the link, the little code that I typed, which is for the start.lua. And it's the, the important one. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps a lot. And it's going to put the video up so other people can actually see it and probably help them too. And if you have any question, post them in the description below. I'll try to inst uh, in the comment section below. I'll try to insert them as much as I can. And that's going to be it, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.